Hello everyone, um, my name is Tim and um, I thought that I would do a video on BMW S65 M3 uh, raw bearings issue and uh, I do have an, an accent because I'm not a native uh, English uh, speaker but I thought that I would do a video now the video quality is a little bit low quality because as you know I live in Asia and um, I'm in Taiwan right now. I'm um, actually I'm from Taiwan, and I thought that I'd like to share with um, maybe a Western world how um, in Taiwan we deal with the uh, raw bearings issue. And I'm a kind of a no frill guy. I don't like to, you know, to make. I don't have a fancy video. I don't know a lot about how to do a a proper YouTube video. But I have information to tell you about a um, few things about M3, M3 cars um, that might be helpful to you. Let me, let me rotate the camera maybe to the right angle because this is the first time I, I do YouTube video. Um, I'm a car guy. I had um, Subaru WRX, Porsche. Um, I had some experience with Lamborghini, Ferraris. And because I have many, many mechanic friends. And um, if this video actually gets some hit... Um, I will show you around my mechanic friends and how they fix cars and things like that. Uh, let me let me do the camera to the right way. Okay, so here's the story. E92 or E90 M3s, everybody is, uh, I see everybody in America or in the Western world, they are absolutely terrified about the uh, road bearing issue. Um, this is my theory. I don't really think that anyone should send the oil analysis to Blackstone because for start you can see uh, metal uh, like a metal powder on the oil filter so every time when you change your engine oil you should just check if there's any uh, metal residue on your filter and generally speaking regardless of if you got a Ferrari, Lamborghini, Porsche whatever engines you have out there if there is a problem with raw bearing it's very easy to pick up the noise Okay, usually majority of the engines that has raw bearing issue, the engine would sound a little bit like a horizontal six. So on the M3, you hear noise like like or so 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 so. You have a kind of a feeling that there is not enough of lubrication in the on the engine. It's it will be like whooshy whooshy hoo hoo hoo, and when you drive it, it actually will sound a bit like a Subaru WRX. Okay. Um, on the forcing of the engine or whatever engines out there when the bearings are out of alignment you're gonna get this sort of kind of like a like a like a WRX burble now the power it will either increase or either lose but most of the time you're gonna lose power because the engine doesn't run smoothly now when you pick up that kind of noise and the noise continues after you change the oil or, or you know you if you if your friend actually your mechanic actually try to change the spark plugs or or change um, uh, things like the um, how do you say the ignition cable that connects the spark plug because he might assume that it's an ignition problem. Now after if, if after he changes the ignition cable, the continue the, the noise continue to persist. Then you have a raw bearing issue. The main thing is that when you have a raw bearing issue, don't rev your engine. You should drive very gently. You know be below um, three thousand RPMs and um, take it to a mechanic and just have the raw bearing replaced. I don't think the pre preventative maintenance is very important because on these engines, um, on this V8, it's very easy to pick up noise uh, that is not normal, okay? So, so that's my theory with raw bearing. You don't have to agree with it. Now, the second part about it is my mechanic friends says that E92 M3, E90 M3, the S65 series engine, you must not use any oil apart for 10W60, okay? Because according to the Asians' theory in Taiwan is that these engines are, are based on the V10 um, foundation. Now, the engine block in the technology, because it doesn't have the, um, the newer tech spark plug, uh, I think in English you call it like a direct fuel injection spark plug, the DFI. It's like what Mercedes has uh, on the W... Uh, W204 uh, C180 turbo. It's that kind of technology. Now, the reason why BMW uses the 10W60 is because this engine, it, it, it's almost like we call this engine basically the Honda S2000 
V8. It's like a VTEC. It's like a V8 of S2000 of a German technology. Okay, you have to keep the rev up. You got to thrash it. You know, you got to always rev it, rev it up. Now, if you use anything below 10W60, okay, the road bearing will will, will thank you for it. Okay, the road bearing will say thank you so much. Uh, the engine's cold. Um, I'm getting the lubrication. The uh, the road bearing alignment will not get out of alignment. But the problem is the upper part of the engine, uh, which I'll, I'll, I'll improve my English a little bit more, it's not going to get the proper oil film strength needed. You're going to have a problem on the upper section of the, of the motor, right? So the idea is that you got to look at all the S65 M3, okay? All the E92, E90 M3 as the engine technology based on the 90s. Okay, now those engines based on the 90s, you got to look at it, those cars similar like to heavily modified WRX and things like that. One should start the M M3 and follow the tachometer. Okay, the tachometer has got the the rev range that you should be rev, you should be the, the the rev should not exceed. Okay, now there's also a temperature temperature gauge on the bottom. Now what I tend to do is I always start my M3 engine. I'll start a car. And I always warm them up idle around three minutes, okay? The reason why I warm them up for three minutes is because I want to get some lubrication because I'm using 10W60 into the rod bearing, okay? In the three minutes of the um, uh, minor oil that, that, that flows inside the rod bearing, then I start to drive. Now, on this V8, if you change the MDCT in the most gentle, okay, in the most gentle setting, like only one bar, and um, and then you just um, change the suspension. You just don't do anything dramatic. You just drive it as you get to 1500 RPM. It shifts up. 1500 RPM shifts up. Now, when you drive around 1500 RPM shifts up, the car will still it will be just as quick as like a, like a, like you know like a Toyota Star little wheels. You're not going to get people saying that you drive too slow. Now, I only start thrashing it when it gets to about 98 Celsius. Now, I don't know how to convert this into American Fahrenheit, okay? So it usually takes about 12 minutes to 15 minutes on a bloody um, 10W60 engine. Oh, sorry, 10W60 oil. Now, this is part of most of the young kids, you know, people who was a little bit younger, you know, they, they have this mentality of, I want to start the engine, I'm just going to thrash it and, 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 and race it. No, you, the engine, the, the road bearing will die, okay? You need 10W60, okay, because... If you go on a drag race or go on a mountain driving, like I can, like if this video gets good hit, I will start posting on all the illegal racing in Asia where I thrashed the, my M3 on the mountains and things for a whole night for two hours of driving. You know, I, I constantly keep the race at 3000 RPM to 6000. The 10, 10W60, you know, the oil temperature is always very low. The film strength is strong. Um, the raw bearing is very, very well protected. Okay. So basically you don't need to have you don't need to have 5W40, 0W40, or 5W50. Now, the C63 AMG, on the other hand, the Mercedes started with 0W40. That's way too thin. Because C60 AMG actually need a 550. The 50 protects the... Um, now, my English is not very good. The C63 has another problem similar. It's not the raw bearing. It's on the upper section. Okay, I don't know how to say that. It's above the camshaft. I think it's like a little metal parts that get punched through. So it needs about, it needs a 550 for a C63 uh, AMG. So basically, the idea to look after E92 or E90 S65 engine is three minutes of warm up. Drive it slowly, 1500 RPM, 1500 RPM, 1500 RPM, until you get 98 Celsius on the engine oil temperature. Plus, on the tachometer, you get around. Um, but the tachometer gets to the 8,000 RPM mark. Okay, so I actually will do a second video because I, I need to drive the M3 today so I don't get like a hot spot on the tire because I've been very busy. This video is, is, is very, very homemade. It's kind of like a Blair, Blair Witch Project quality. Um, I'm sorry, I'm very tired. I can tell you something. I work in a manufacturing business. So I do know a little bit about all these manufacturing things and all that, but I'm not planning, listen, I'm not planning to make a very, very beautiful video because I'm, I'm no longer a computer nerd like what I used to be. Now, if you believe in my information, then you believe it. If you, if you want to ask me some questions about, about um, challenge me if you want. I got, I got a, a, a gains of mechanic behind me. Um, I can show you the uh, Asian workshop and how we do things here and, and to give you um, a sushi side.
of how we treat the German cars here. Okay, so in the next video, maybe actually I might keep this video the same. If this video bored you, it's boring for you now. Maybe you should turn it off right now and go do something else. But I'm actually going to go walk outside my house, get down to the basement. I'm going to start up my M3, do the three minutes warm up and show you how to, how to warm up this engine properly, all right? Now, the second question all you Westerners are, are always worrying is this. Uh, should I use liquid moly oil? Should I use castor oil? Should I use mobile one? Should I use a shell helix? Should I use kung fu oil? Should I use um, Chinese oil, Vietnamese oil? Listen, according to my mechanic friends, every oil has different ingredient. Okay? A lot of people are against castor oil because castor oil actually um, is the biggest sludge creator. But the theories we have in Taiwan is that all the older BMW E65, E46 series, you get this timing chain noise. Um, Castro actually prevent the timing chain noise by creating the sludge. Now, our offline theory, okay, our theory without the um, German data is that there's a part of my mates, we are Castro fan because we believe that sludge, it's like a barrier that can get into the, the very tight tolerance of the raw bearing. That sludge actually helps the, the three minutes warm up procedure. During that three minutes, that sludge is like the first layer of protection. Now, once that sludge gets rubbed off on the raw bearing, the, the, the 10W60 oil warms up, the whole bearing will be smooth for the rest of the evening's um, happy thrashing hours. So the thing is that, what I want to tell everyone is that, I think sometimes people complex things, okay? In my manufacturing business, I used to make things for the Germans. Now, they are very precise people. They don't use crap stuff. When the German says, this is approved, it's approved. We don't need to use Kung Fu oil. We don't use, need to use Mobile One. Because after all, when S65 was around, it was built in 2007. We're talking about 11 years ago, okay? Or 12 years ago as today. Sorry, my English. Now, during that time, all right, the technology is very different. It is very important to understand that you are driving a piece of equipment that was based on 12 years ago. It's like, it's like flying the 747 and a propeller airplane, okay? I also own a 986 Boxster. The rev, the tackle, the, the way how the engine, that A65 delivered power, is somehow a little bit similar to a 986 Boxster. You gotta rev it, you gotta shift down early. This is not one of those engines like 335 where you get you get like 40 kilogram of torque around 1700 RPM. Now, if you're a driver where you're looking for very early torque, then you should buy C63, or you should just buy a 335, or buy a new car, okay? Now, the biggest problem in Asia is that a lot of people, they don't have a lot of money, okay? They, they work hard, the wage is very low here. They finally buy an M3, they get all paranoid. You know, they go Castro 10W60 this morning, Mobile One tomorrow. And then, then they use Kung Fu brand. When you got three kinds of engine oil that mixes inside of an engine, right? It actually creates a lot of sludge. So it doesn't matter how expensive you spend in the oil. It's like I drink Coca-Cola, then I drink Starbucks, uh, and then I go eat McDonald's. I'm going to get constipated. That's what happened with inside of your engine, okay? My theory with my mechanic gangs is that we believe in using one oil that you like. It doesn't matter if it's liquid moly. A mobile personally i believe in the castor oil sludge okay castor oil will always give your engine some sort some sort of sludge but the sludge doesn't form to a degree that the engine get blocked and the engine sees okay now i also own another seven series okay if this video gets a very good hit i'm happy to show you my seven series engine sound later we're gonna go downstairs I'll first show you my 9086 Boxster. I've done nearly 220,000 kilometers on the cheapest castor edge oil, okay? That was basically run on a certification that according to 986 Boxster, it's an A40 certification. You gotta look at the bottle, okay? I'm a, I'm a heavy believer in castor 10W60 TWS because that is M approved oil and I also use Porsche approved oil, but I prefer to use castor brand. Okay, so that's my part about the oil. The final part I want to tell everyone is that you should cool down your engine. Okay, my mechanic gangs and the, the, the drag race people that I spend every Saturday listening to techno and, you know, have sushi and, and that sort of a typical Asian's um, whatever life I have at the moment. I don't even know what life I have at the moment, okay? 
The main thing is that when we thrust the car, I don't really push beyond 110 degree. The, the, the engine really go, rarely go up to 110, but on the way cruising home, I always give about 20 minutes of cool down period. I will select the highest gear. I will let the engine oil cool down to about 98 degree. And the final part is I will, I will always get my air condition fan to the maximum power, right? But I'll turn the compressor off. Now, I'll turn the compressor off is because that I utilize the air conditioning fan to dry the condenser. Now, on a BMW, on a Porsche, on all these German, ex, you know, execute all these expensive cars, you got to make sure, right? You got to make sure that the condenser stays alive because you got to take off the whole dashboard, the whole steering just to fix the condenser. Now, the compressor, by right, you should turn off the compressor when you thrash your car. Okay, but 986 Boxster has a thermal switch that when the compressor, you know, gets to a certain degree, the compressor shuts down. But I always turn off uh, my air condition when I thrash the car. But who cares? Compressor are easy to fix. Okay, Johnny Lau down the road, my neighbor can fix compressor. Even my little beagle, my little beagle here, you know, she know how to fix the compressor. It's nothing hard about fixing the compressor. But to do the con to do the condenser, the whole dashboard, that everything needs to come out. So you should blow fan, okay? Switch only air, turn off the compressor, maximum fan power for three minutes until you feel there are no moist on the air coming out of uh, uh, your air conditioning vent. That way, there is no moisture on your condenser. And then you should always replace your cabin filter because your cabin filter filters all the dirt. See what happens is the dirt hits on the condenser, then the condenser shatter. And when the condenser shatters, it, the coating on the surface of the condenser gets wrecked and the condenser gets rusted. Get, after it gets rusted, the, the, the condenser has to leak water. Then the leak water and then all the leaves and, and stuff fall inside of the condenser. It blocks the drainage pipe. Then the condenser becomes a mini swimming pool. It becomes a miso soup. Right? And once it becomes a bloody miso soup, your car starts to smell funny. And your M3 will become, you know, probably will smell like some old truck out there. Right? You know, those one of those trucks shown in Terminator 2. You'll be a piece of crap that you want to throw away. Okay. This is only a, this is a 17 video at the mo 17 minutes video at the moment. I'm very tired. Listen, I'm not one of the guys. I don't know how to do computer animation. I will walk downstairs right now. I'll show you three minutes on how to drive the M3 for warm up and then for cool down. I'll shut this video down. You guys can laugh at me and say that I'm not sincere about doing a YouTube video. But hey, it's about 12 or 15 here. I got to go back to my manufacturing business tomorrow to make some roller blinds and then make five bucks per roller blinds to supply to some customer in Australia where, you know, I make other people become a millionaire. My customers are driving current shape M3 and I'm only driving a used one. So God, God bless me. God bless my, my beagle. And let's go downstairs right now, right? And let's go look at my M3. So let me, uh, how do I switch this camera around? How do I switch this camera around? Camera, camera, camera. Uh, I have no idea how to switch this camera around. Right, but actually, listen. I will try to switch this camera around. If I fail, I will make a second video. How do I do to switch this camera around? Jeez, this is this is bad. I don't know. Actually, my my camera won't switch it around. So, uh, okay, let me stop the video.